Welcome back. In, in this video on data visualization, I want to talk about the idea of redundant coding. And redundant coding is the idea of using two forms of encoding uh, to represent the same pieces of information in order to emphasize it and to make it uh, less error prone. And, and like we talked about in the last video in color, often to make it more sensitive for those with some sort of co color vision deficit. So here's an example of a of a scatter plot uh, that kind of fails at uh, this uh, because what we have is we have three different colors, you know, an orange, a green, and a blue. Uh, they all have the same circular shape, and the two two groups that are overlapping in space are the two groups uh, that are given the most similar color. Um, so we have, you know, you know, one group that jumps out as different from the other two, but the other two don't really jump out as different. From each other. Uh, this figure shows an alternative vision of, version of that same figure uh, where we've done two things. The first thing we've done is switch the color assignments uh, so that the contrasting color colors are, are closer to each other and, and the similar colors are, are you know, physically, spatially more distinct, but then we've also changed the symbol on those colors to make them also more visually distinct. So here we're using both uh, color and symbol to encode the same piece of information, not to encode two different pieces of information to kind of reinforce uh, that contrast. Um, the other things that we can run into with, with encoding is conflicts between how we've encoded pieces of information. So here we have uh, you know, a graph of stock prices of the, th the four biggest tech companies in the world. Uh, over time, and we have a clear ordering of those uh, stock prices over most of the time of the time series, and that ordering of the prices actually conflicts with the legend. So the legend is in alphabetical order uh, rather than being in the same order as the data itself, which can you know kind of creates a mental conflict between the legend and the the data. So one obvious thing you can do, and, and I always encourage folks to do this whenever you make a legend. Uh, make sure that the data and the legend are in the same order. And one thing to be wary of with, with R is it has a very frequent habit uh, where it will often, uh, if you're stacking in information, you know, the default order in a, in a legend is often the exact opposite of the order in the data. So it's almost in the, almost, the defaults almost make it easy to do something uh, completely wrong. Uh, and, and you could be much better off just taking that time to make sure that things are in the same order. In fact, if you go back to the, the very beginning set of these videos where I show that those examples of population growth rate, it, you know, I in fact did that. I have a figure uh, where the, the order of the curves is in one order and the, the legend for the, that is, is completely reversed. Um, so here's an, an improved version of this where not only have we put things in a sensible order, but we've also try to design figures so they don't need legends. And that would be a, another general recommendation is uh, legends are important when you need them, but if you can avoid them altogether by directly labeling information, uh, that's usually much simpler for, for everyone involved because you don't have to visually move uh, between the figure and, and the legend in order to make, uh, in order to interpret figures. Uh, so here's another example of that, that initial figure we looked at uh, as well, where we've Kind of gotten rid of the legend and directly labeled uh, the three groups and also added an ellipse around the three groups to kind of emphasize uh, you know, their, their mean and, and uh, variance. <clears throat> the other thing that is, is important to, to note, if you're using uh, multiple encodings uh, to, to reinforce each other, so if you're using, you know, uh, what, what GG plot also calls, often calls aesthetics. If you're using you know, multiple aesthetics, uh, try to make sure that you don't have separate legends for the same piece of information multiple times. So this is, an, a, I think, a nice example uh, where we've added color to the, the ridgeline plot that we show, saw in an earlier video to emphasize uh, these temperature gradients. So we're kind of using you know, you know, the, the temperature gradient is in the x-axis, but we're reinforcing that through the use of color. What we wouldn't want to do here is then have like a vertical, you know, color bar uh, on the 
you know, on the y-axis and then having you know, the x-axis on the horizontal. So, so now we've, what we've done effectively, what, what was done effectively here, I didn't do this, what was done effectively here uh, was to integrate the x-axis with the color reference bar so that we don't have the same piece of information showing up twice. And, and similarly, like if we went back um, to this figure, you, if, you, if this figure had, had still had a legend, you wouldn't have wanted, you know, one legend for the shapes and another legend for the colors. You'd want that, you know, both of those pieces of information encoded in the same legend. If you saw, if you had a legend, again, you can get rid of legends even better. Uh, so that kind of wraps up uh, this series of videos on some of the principles of data visualization. Uh, next up, we're going to have, uh, we're going to start talking about how to design uh, interactive visualizations. That'll be in the next lecture series.